Hey there folks, welcome back, and today I'm talking about the news that Stephen Yaxley Lennon, the con man known as Tommy Robinson, has just been given a nine month jail sentence. Now, I know a lot of the people who come to watch this video, if they're familiar with my works at all, and they might have been through me talking about the BNP, the EDL, Yaxley Lennon, Nigel Farage, uh, Britain First Leaders, so Jada Francis and Paul Golding, might have already switched off this video, got into the comments section, and given me some kind of abuse. Now I'm hoping that if you are one of those people who would typically do that, you're going to stick around. Because what I'm talking about today is why this kind of thing was a long time coming, why this sentence is arguably deserved, and why if you actually do care about this kind of child abuse, he's not the voice to listen to. Now of course there are always going to be some kinds of things where you're going to find something somewhat truthful. In what he's saying. Um, there's always going to be the allegation that authorities are covering up these kinds of investigations. And that's where he tries to get people on the side. He actually then isn't fueled by an agenda of protecting children. He may be if they're white children, and even if they're white, they have to be British born. And generally to British families, in his mind, usually more typically English. And that's not what he wants to tell you. What he wants to tell you is he's looking out for the kids. And this is something that we've seen in far-right politics for a while now. Um, the reference I always go back to, and I'll put it in the description below if I can find it again, because it's one that I used when I was doing a course on the far-right this year at university, is a clip from Nick Griffin, when he was leader of the BNP, giving a speech in the United States to a room full of people such as David Duke. In this speech, Griffin says um, that the idea is to be more kind of palatable. So as much as you do have your extreme ideology, you try to sell it off as something more palatable to begin with. So freedom, democracy, your rights. Because they sound like things that people can't oppose. Because if you sound like you're opposing them, you're like, oh, you're anti-democracy, you're anti-rights, you're anti-freedoms. Yaxley Nennon was jailed for breaching contempt of court by broadcasting outside of a trial. Now, Yaxley Nennon might deny the allegations on the grounds that he was talking about things that were publicly available. That might be true. But he could do that from the comfort of his own home. He could do that from a studio. He could still do it live, but he doesn't have to do it from outside the court. And he doesn't have to say things that could be seen to encourage vigilante action. Because if you do that, then you're putting the trial's proceedings in jeopardy. And that's something that he doesn't want people to think about. That's something he doesn't want people to know about. Because his big sell is that he's the one who protects the children. Of course he doesn't. We, we know that he doesn't. If you, if, if you, if you're somebody who's subscribed to a similar kind of political ideology as me, you know he's probably one of the most dangerous people to have. Because he only cares about the children when they're being abused by people who fit a certain profile. So it doesn't matter if a grooming gang has someone who is white English. If it has other people who are, say, Muslim of a background like, say, Pakistani. Because that's the kind of profile that the people he tends to focus on do belong to. Those are the people he's going to look at. He's going to only look at the people who, through kind of descriptive identifiers, don't fit the profile of him. He doesn't want to talk necessarily about people like Jimmy Savile. He doesn't want to talk about anything to do with Operation Utree. He doesn't want to really talk about the allegations of any kind of ring in Westminster. No. It doesn't interest him. Because the place where he can make the most gains is by turning it into some kind of hate, hateful rant that will inevitably fuel more Islamophobia, fuel more anti-immigrant sentiment, and cause more racism, more racist attacks, potentially a few people dying. I mean, it's something that we already somewhat saw, and I know it sounds like almost a kind of 
which he pointed immediately go to Joe Cox's assassination. But the murder of Joe Cox yelled out Britain first. Whether or not it was to say allegiance to Britain first is a separate issue entirely. This is someone who bought into this kind of narrative. This is someone who bought into this kind of agenda. And this is someone who's listening to people like Tommy Robinson. We could talk about Christchurch as well. This is somebody who targeted Muslims, specifically targeting Muslims, and decided that listening to people like Yakti Nenon, it was a good idea to go and do this. Of course it's not. And I'll say this about anybody who commits any act of terror, there is something fundamentally wrong with the system if somebody's able to go and do that. Uh, it's somebody who hasn't properly been looked after by the state. Because nobody really in the right kind of mentality will want to willingly take away innocent lives. There's always external factors at play. But this is what Yakti Nenon wants you to think about. He wants you to think he's a journalist. He wants you to think he's actually trying to save children. If he was, he wouldn't be broadcasted live outside of a court. If he was, he wouldn't be inciting violence. If he was, he wouldn't be messing up these trials. Because somebody who actually does care about the children and does care about victims of child sex abuse. We'll talk about these issues. We'll be an activist on these issues. But won't profile. And they won't incite hatred. And they'll want to see the full course of justice carried out. Because at the end of the day, somebody who's doing that is breaking the law. Somebody who's actually taking part in child sex abuse is breaking the law and they deserve jail time for it. Now, I hope you've stuck around for this whole video, especially if you're somebody who would typically listen to Toby Robinson. And I hope you come away from this and think slightly differently about him. I'll leave some links down below for groups such as Hope Not Hate. I'll leave a link down below for the Guardian article that I read before preparing this video. And I hope before you go into the comment section, before you say some kind of abusive thing directed at me for being a soy boy, beta, whatever, I hope you'll think, is it worth it? Because you actually then is a con man. doesn't care about the individual followers. He just cares about what will promote his own image. So thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye for now.